Well, thank you. Uh, and in the spirit of unity, let me agree <laughs> with all of my colleagues to this point and just reiterate how strong the commitment is. And while we certainly have some honest policy disagreements, particularly with regard to the sanctions, uh, the Nord Stream 2 sanctions and the sequence, uh, that should not be mistaken by Vladimir Putin or Russia as disunity in our resolve to stand with the people of Ukraine and to stand with freedom. Um, the, the trip was fast but intense. Uh, this morning's briefing with the President was uh, informative and I think constructive. And, uh, and I think uh, at this point the, uh, the message is loud and clear. The United States stands as one in unity with the freedom-loving people of Ukraine and never wants a return to what is, of course, Vladimir Putin, Putin's dream of, uh, of reuniting Ukraine as part of the Russian Empire. I know, Senator Kramer, you have expressed some support for what Menendez wants to do in that package, and the leadership has said that they're open to reasonable additions and modifications to that from Republican members. Uh, what do you think the chances are of turning that into a, a, a bipartisan legislative, legislative package? Well, there are members of both parties discussing that uh, in the relevant committees. I, I think passing something's better than passing nothing. I think passing Menendez instead of Rubio is, is not as good as passing Rubio. That said, I think if we can get the two parties together and we ought to work on it now and we ought to work on it hard and we ought to work on it fast and it ought to include everything. I think Senator Cotton listed an, a number of them, including SWIFT, cutting off SWIFT, uh, access to the global uh, electronic payment system. It's got to be severe and it's got to be broad-based. Uh, broad the, the sequence is, is a debatable issue. It, it's a, a disagreement. I think we can strengthen some parts of it, more like we'd like it, uh, agree to some of the things that, that uh, the Democrats want, but at the end of the day I think we need to get to a package that, that is decisive and that is enough to be a deterrent to action. And uh, again, getting back to Nord Stream 2, it never should have been built. It's ha it has handed uh, Vladimir Putin leverage he should never have had. That said, that said, um, it is now a source of revenue for Vladimir Putin that if it is stopped um, can, can still hurt and we need to be committed to that and we need Germany to say publicly that they're committed to that. What was the overall response to the information you provided to the administration this morning in the secure briefing? Yeah. You know, I, I thought it was a very instructive and constructive discussion. I don't think we surprised the president or uh, Mr. Sullivan or anybody in the administration with what we what we said and, and quite honestly we listened as much as we as we spoke um, for example with, with the in the area of sanctions which is what we're discussing um, Rob is exactly right uh, we want to have a strong bipartisan sanctions package and melding existing legislation together um, strengthening it from our standpoint uh, I think you could have an overwhelming vote. But if, if they choose to just you know, have a watered down sanctions package, I don't know how, how, how strong the vote will be. But I want a big vote because that again expresses the, the unity. But And Tom, Tom is exactly right. There's, enough has been done for us to, to punch back a little bit. And, and right now I think Vladimir Putin is saying, you know, thank you Mr. President, but words are cheap. And, and it's time to demonstrate some action. But yes, we're working on, on, on some things together and the president was instructive. The president raises an important point, to be fair. Sanctions don't just, they're not a bilateral or a unilateral thing. Even if it's a unilateral sanction, it, it splashes over. It's got a dynamic effect with allies, with our, you know, our own exporters. Uh, so so we, have to, we have to be thoughtful about it. Um, we have to be committed to it. We have to be clear about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I th he listened attentively. I, he, he shared a lot as well. Um, w one of the challenges that's come up many times is that he, he has the additional burden of keeping NATO together. And right now, you know, there's at least one outlier. And, and while NATO's united against a common adversary, they're not all united at the same level of intensity. And so um, we want to, you know, we want to be able to be as uni united both as the United States of America and the United States Congress and with our NATO allies. And it's not quite as simple as just, um, you know, a, a uni unilateral uh, group of sanctions. Yeah, let's not forget that the escalation of all this has come from one side, not the other. The peace-loving, freedom-loving Ukrainians, uh, NATO, the United States of America, none of us 
have escalated this situation, and every attempt to de-escalate it with with uh, um, diplomatic attempts, which of which there have been many, just several, just in the last week or two, um, have clearly not uh, have not deterred Vladimir Putin. So the time for that discussion is long past.